Hello, fellow robots out there in Internet Land. I am Sobertron, and welcome back to episode two of Better Minecraft, guys. The response from last episode was pretty good. It seemed like you guys like what we got going on here, uh, so we're just gonna keep things rolling. I don't know how long I'm gonna make episodes in this series. It might continue on to be, uh, you know, a big thing. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, we're back over here at our raid farm where I was last uh, last episode because uh, we needed it, uh, and I've added in some storage. I actually built this on stream but I've actually changed it since stream uh, you can you can clearly see there's something something unique going on over here with these golden hoppers uh, now I didn't know these existed until sham showed me and prior to that I had just done standard impulse you know item filters back there but these hoppers right here act like an item filter themselves they possess a unique additional slot as you can see there why is that got hoppers in it that's weird that's probably been broken so i'll fix that in a minute that's where redstone's supposed to go uh, but you see you put one item in this little filter slot right there um and the only thing that this hopper will let through is now emeralds uh this one should be redstone this should be gunpowder here i believe uh yep and then glowstone uh and the cool thing about it is you can put generally uh non-stackable items in here where are they at totems so right now my totems are full we have tons of them but it's amazing that you can do that so we got potions of luck here too that we're getting on this mod pack and then the standard healing potions as well that we can easily filter out uh and then i've got a additional just slice of random stuff that's going in here all the other things and then anything else just gets burned because we don't need all that much stuff uh, but Eliza's actually been the one who's been using this place the most. Uh, she's been gathering us emeralds and uh, making tools and things. Uh, we had another member uh, from Titancraft join us, uh, Alex, who is Irma's kind of partner in crime. Uh, but you can see, we're building up a nice supply of emeralds now. And we absolutely need it. Uh, but yeah, I want to show you one other thing uh, that Sham has been working on that he discovered. And it's amazing, uh, this one unique thing about this mod pack. Uh that allows you to do something really cool with spawners. So I'm going to head over to the uh, zombie grinder, which is now a zombie and skelly grinder. I'll show you that in a second, uh, but I'll be right back. So here we are at what's once just the zombie spawner grinder room, and now it's both zombies and skellies. There are four spawners of each. There's uh, four zombie spawners over there now, and there are four uh, skelly spawners over there. And the cool thing that Cham found out is that you can move Spawners. Let me get back over here. I gotta find the oh, loop around here. Um, you, you can hear them. You can hear them coming in. But you can see here that is not a general uh, layout of how spawners come. Uh, just like we can move chests and things uh, in this mod pack, which I haven't shown yet, but I'll show you that right now. You can move spawners as well. How did I get in here? Let's just, let's just do that. There we go. Let's put those back. But you can actually, if you have both your hands empty, you can shift and click, and you can pick up a chest. Why aren't you no picky? Yeah, 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 no, come on. Click. Click. What is going on right now? Oh, I think I picked that up. Let me put that there. And that. There we go. Now watch. Look at me. I got a little chest in my hands. <laughs> the, the animations are a little bit janky, uh, but it's really cool. You can move chests like this. You can move a lot of things. Anything with, like, an inventory, you can just pick up and move, uh, which is kind of cool. Uh, the other thing that we found out with this, let's just click that there, is uh, I can pick up puppers. It's so cool. The one, the one drawback of this is you lose saturation so fast when you do stuff like this. So let's put puppy down. There we go. Oops, I threw him a little bit. Uh, but yeah, that's really cool, what what we discovered here. Uh, so we've got four skellies over there and four zombies over there uh, doing some auto-kill stuff here. I don't know what happened to this dog, though. He kind of got swooped out of his minecart. Uh, but we're collecting lots of things, uh, you know, the standard stuff you get from here. Uh, and we get the occasional copper, because sometimes we'll get a uh, drowned that will uh, convert inside that place. Uh, and it's kind of acting like a makeshift iron farm. Uh, we don't have a lot of iron to our name. I'm actually going to steal all of this, because I need it for today's project. Uh, and the project is going to be about replicating this iron as quickly as possible. We need an iron farm, guys, and we need it in the spawn chunk, so it's always on, always loaded. So Eliza and I did a little bit of work uh, before I started this recor uh, recording. Uh, so, I will meet you guys back at spawn, the actual world spawn of the server. So, I was about to sleep the night away, uh, so I can start recording the next clip, but then that thing happened. This is what's known as a blood moon, and during a blood moon, you cannot sleep the night away, and mob spawning gets taken to a whole nother level. 
Uh, they're just everywhere. You got these. You got these big like orc dudes here that are you know scary, but not really. But uh, yeah, lots, lots and lots of dudes out there. So I'm just gonna. I want to show you uh, what I was doing the other day, just because I was bored and I didn't feel like logging out. I was just flying around here and watching all the mobs spawn in. It is like, it's insane. It's like, this is not how Minecraft was meant to be played, but it's so cool. Because uh, it's not something most players are used to. And one cool thing I discovered in the last Blood Moon is right over here at our little bad omen farm. Uh, because this whole area is conditioned for only pillagers to spawn in, that's all that spawns in here, and they spawn in really, really fast. It's insane. Uh, the other day, I was just looking at it. It was, it was crazy. It was full on crazy. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna wait for this blood moon to go bye bye, because uh, I don't want to be doing anything when this thing's happening. So I'm just gonna, just gonna fly around for a bit. We'll see. Watch all the chaos go on. Uh, but when I get back, uh, I'm sure you saw it a second ago, uh, where spawn is. Uh, there might have been a beacon beam there, because the wither may or may not have been killed. Uh, but yeah, give me, I don't know, six minutes till the moon sets, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll kick things off on this project for today. The horrible blood moon is now gone, guys. Uh, I just came from the raid farm, uh, so heading back north towards spawn, uh, I needed to grab some milk to clear bad omen, because that's all I did. I just killed pillagers. For six minutes or so. Uh, and the raid farm had more iron there too. But as you can see, Eliza and I have been busy. Uh, we we got a beacon uh, and I was able to, me and her were able to dig out this nice big kind of two by two chunk area. And we are going to shove four iron farms into this thing. I've already done all the math on it. Uh, it should work out just fine. They shouldn't interact with each other. Uh, it's going to be a little bit weird because they're all going to be kind of turned 90 degree angles from each other. It's going to you know, it'll work, though. That's the important thing. It'll work. Uh, not doing anything kind of crazy here. We're just taking the standard kind of known villager idea uh, or iron farm idea and doing it four times. Uh, I figured four was probably going to be a little bit of overkill for us, but I need that iron to start flowing through. Uh, I'm pretty sure this, now that, that I grabbed a bit more iron from the raid farm that I had left over there, uh, that's the extent of our iron. At least for, like, the main group. Other people might have small little stashes, but that's all we have. There is no more iron to be had, so we need this uh, iron farm up and running as quickly as possible. Uh, so what I think I'm going to do first is I, I want to make sure I'm build this, building this thing correctly, that spacing-wise, everything's good. Uh, so I'm actually going to start at the bottom uh, with our collection system, uh, rudimentary collection system. It's mostly just going to be hoppers, uh, and then I can build up the drop shoots from there, and then work on the platform and all that other stuff. Uh, it's n honestly not going to take me all that long to do all of this. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to do what I always do. I'm going to I'm going to shut up and I'm going to build. So I'll see you guys in a little bit once this kind of spacing stuff is done. So I did a little bit more work than I originally anticipated, uh, just because I had all the materials on me, and it was really quick to just make all four at once, so why just make one to show you when I can do all of it. Uh, also, in between clips, I brought over two villagers. Uh, there's one underneath here and one underneath here, because we're going to need 12 villagers to uh, power this iron farm. Uh, I don't know if I'm actually going to build a breeder for it, or if I'm just going to throw food at them uh, and just move them as I get them. Uh, we'll see. We'll see in a little bit. I'm not 100% sure right now. Uh, but one thing I wanted to show too is just another cool thing in this mod is this stuff called Ignistone, uh, which is essentially like ice, but it's lava instead of uh, water. So uh, you can use Silk Touch on it and you get the stone back, but if you uh, fortune it, uh, boom, lava. Amazing. Like, lava buckets are a thing of the past. Uh, the problem I ran into is I have actually not found any out in the wild in the nether. Uh, I think Sham uh, had a couple stacks on him. I'm not sure where he got it from. I'm not sure what the spawning conditions for this block is. Uh, but it's very cool. Like, just all the all the lava. And for me, I use lava for a lot of things. Uh, it's absolutely necess uh, a necessity here. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll answer cash in a minute. <laughs> um, so the next step is honestly just to build uh, the spawning platforms for these golems. Uh, so they're all going to go right here, uh, just on top of this layer of glass. And it's just, a, I have a 7x8 layer. Most of these farms you, you find tutorials on are, I think, 5x5. I figured a little bit more spawning 
Uh, that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, it, it doesn't hurt. Uh, it only helps. Uh, so I have the materials to do it. We've got the space to do it. So we're going to do it. Uh, the other thing some of you may be asking is why am I building a vanilla iron farm? Uh, there are two reasons behind it. Uh, I could build a, uh, a spawner-based farm. We could make iron golem spawners. Uh, the problem with spawners is that you have to load them, right? And despite that you can have tons of different spawn types in this game, uh, they still have to be loaded by a player. Whereas this farm uh, is going to be in these spawn chunks. Uh, so it will always be on, always working, which is better for us. Uh, there's, you know, a good amount of people on the server now. Uh, I'm not even sure how many people are actually here now. It's probably around 10. Uh, and this farm right here is going to produce 24 stacks of iron ingots an hour. And we use a lot of iron. What happened? Did I not break that one? There we go. Uh, so yeah, that's it. That's literally all we have to do. I probably have to raise this glass up a bit. Uh, and then we just have to get the villager chambers up too, which are very simple. It's just like a 3x3 three three platform with three beds, and that's cool. And then we have to get the zombie in here, and he's actually going to go directly above this glass and i've got these other cool redstone uh, mechanics that are going to help because the uh villagers need to sleep and all that fun stuff uh so i just need to replicate this three more times and then get some other platforms in and uh run a little bit of redstone and we can get this farm activated which is highly needed we are severely hurting on iron why oh Ugh. That's good to know. Let me uh, let me fix that. I'm glad I saw that right now. M many of you might know what's going on here. It's winter time on the server right now, and all that water is freezing. Uh, we can can I thank you. Uh, torches, all the torches. Hopefully that's enough light. It should be. We'll find out shortly. I don't know. I did not anticipate that, but eventually there'll be a ceiling over this, so it won't matter. So yeah, I'm glad I got that though. Uh, so yeah, I'm actually gonna start uh, streaming here in a minute, so maybe you guys will see it, maybe you won't, but when I get back, you'll see kind of the results of a couple hours of stream time, uh, so I'll see you in a bit. So I had a very, very productive stream with my partner in Crime Cash. Uh, built this breeder, as you can see, it's working nicely, and actually we're almost done with it. Uh, I think I need, yeah, I need six more villagers in total. I don't want to use these two because I don't want their inventories to be full of potatoes. Uh, I've got two guys in there plus that baby. I think we might be done. How many babies are in there? I wish I hadn't fallen right there. We'll see. Uh, so, yeah, that's enough. We can actually shut the breeder off now. Holy crap, I actually didn't expect that. Let's shut this thing off really quick. It served its purpose well. It was much better than, uh, that, that should be enough. Anyway, uh, I've got two of the modules working thus far. I had to do some crazy waterworks here, and I haven't removed it yet, but both these two sides of the farm, these two modules, are working nicely. You can see there's a golem burning down there right now, uh, and nothing there yet, but you should see any second now. Wow, frames, hi. Any second now, we should see an iron golem spawning in one of these two modules. And they're spaced just enough apart uh, so they don't interfere with each other. Uh, a golem spawning in this village will not prevent a golem from spawning into this village. And I'm dropping them really low to kind of clean up that uh, mechanic as quickly as possible. If I can just see one, please. Any day now, guys? Don't do this to me. Don't do it. Don't do it. Anyway. There! Yay, one of them worked. And there's the other one. So, beautiful. They are both spawning uh, golems now, which is great. Uh, getting a little bit of iron going. It hasn't been running for that long. That one, and then this one just started working. It took a while uh, for night to come for uh, the villagers in that module to actually go to sleep so that they can spawn uh, golems. Uh, but yeah, we just have uh, two, six more villagers to get in here. Um, let me explain this red zone. I've been walking all around it, but I haven't really explained what's going on here. So, villagers need to sleep every once every 20 minutes, or at least get into a bed. They don't need to sleep the entire night or anything, they just need to be laying down. Uh, so what I've done is I've hooked up a daylight sensor to detect when it's dark, uh, and it'll be uh, uh, observed by the observer, obviously, go through the repeater, and then push out that redstone block uh, to power uh, this pulse extender. So redstone will come through here just to extend the redstone signal. And when that happens, the trap doors will close. And when the trap doors close, our villagers can then not see that zombie anymore, and they can actually get in bed. But it's only going to be closed for, I think, four seconds at most. 
Uh, and then the trap door opens back up again once all this redstone depowers, and then the villagers are woken up by the zombie again. So it works. It's working fantastically. Uh, I just really want to get the last villagers in here, clean up all this, and then I want to do a full-scale test. I want to do an hour-ish long test. Uh, an hour would be ideal. I might want to do it a little bit later when less people are online because TPS is going to be struggling uh, with this many people on right, right now. Uh, and it won't give a realistic result of a true hour. Uh, but maybe that's for the best. We'll see. If I get anywhere above 12 stacks of iron uh, ingots an hour, I will call that uh, good, in my opinion. That's, that should be plenty to meet our needs. Uh, but I'm going to tear all this out. I'm going to move those other villagers into those last two modules, and then I'll come back, uh, hopefully with an hour-long test done, and we can see what the fruits of our labor have been. So I just concluded our hour-long test with all four modules up and running. Uh, and I'm probably going to be pleasantly surprised by the results, especially considering we had another Blood Moon during that hour-long test. Uh, and it probably caused some of our villagers not to be able to sleep for 20 minutes, because during a Blood Moon, not even the villagers are allowed to sleep. It's horrible. I didn't know that at the time, but now I do. So this is probably a worst-case scenario test that we have going on. Uh, but you can see... I. If you're noticing really well, I added in a little bit more redstone. Uh, what I was finding was that if the villagers are in bed, uh, their line of sight, uh, the, they just couldn't see each other. Something was happening to where they uh, would constantly wake up. Uh, and I was concerned that that wasn't going to let them all get to bed before somebody slept through the night. Uh, so what I did was I added in this little redstone trail with a, a sticky piston with a block on it. That way, his full line of sight is blocked. I can probably change that out to a piston or something else too, but we're going to keep it as is with the trapdoor right now. But now, there's no way the zombies can see the villagers and vice versa. Uh, now that that's all said and done, let's take a look at our results. I don't care about the poppies right now, I only care about the iron. And because of the Blood Moon, if we get anywhere near 12 stacks, I'll be happy. But I'm... I'm Pretty optimistic. I hope we get somewhere near 20. So, let's see. Ah, uh, good sign so far. Four and a half stacks. Let's see. Up to nine. This is good, guys. I'm happy about this. Oh, if we can get 18 stacks. Nice. So, 18 and a half stacks of iron ingots in an hour-long test. And this, like I said, worst case scenario. Absolute worst case scenario. Let's turn that off. Ah, all the buttons. What is happening? Ah, ugh. that was scary. 18 and a half stacks of iron ingots. That's two stacks of blocks. That's great. That's fantastic. I'm overwhelmed with those results. It's great. Uh, so, yeah, we're just going to let this thing run now. I got to probably work out some kind of storage for this place because uh, it's not going to last very long uh, using that right there. And I also probably need to clear all of this out. Our breeder is done. We no longer need it. So we're going to get rid of that and move some of this stuff and hopefully cover this place up and build something amazing on top of it in the future because I have an idea for here. I don't know when I'm going to get to it, but I have an idea for this place. I want I want our spawn area to look amazing. Uh, so I'm going to turn the farm back on now. I have this temporary switch in place here, but we're just going to do that and things should start spawning right away. Very nice. Very, very nice. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Uh, and yeah, until next time, you guys have a good one.